We have pallet changers. We're able to swap out the props. These just came off, so we're gonna pull those out, put new castings in there, and there's gonna be no downtime. So in January, you guys put the machines or like? First machines started arriving in December, just in the last month and we're expanding with another nine. You get another nine Hellers? We're gonna get another nine Hellers so wow. we can get this entire facility up to max capacity. And then we're gonna have to expand after that. Oh man, check out this crazy prop right here. That's right, we're in Detroit, Michigan at Shero Marine. These guys solving huge problems, building crazy automation with the Heller machines, and they figured out how to make their own parts right here in the USA. Quality parts at crazy prices because of the efficiency that they put into the process. All machines right here are running by themselves. It just takes one person to run it. And we're gonna dive deep behind the scenes to see how this whole thing came about. Boom. Love the quality of work, like absolutely amazing. What are like some of the problems you guys face in actually machining these? Are you guys just knew exactly what to do? It was a like it was a whole two year process to get this part machined quickly and at a high level of quality. So get your time down. Get the time down, yeah. but also produce a good quality. Awesome. So we are also polishing all these propellers. So the machining process and the polishing process all have to come together. Essentially, if we don't have a good enough finish on the part. It looks like, it looks bad when we polish it. So you guys are doing polishing in-house? We're doing that all in-house. I was just talking to Greg, and Greg was talking about like how he went throughout the world and nobody could produce these. Yeah. And you guys did it like in a day. When we first started making these for the marine industry, we started making them out of aluminum. We were CNC machining them in California. And when we started to make them out of stainless steel, we're working in India with a company out there that quoted us that they could make these. And it took them a very long time to make them. And we asked ourselves, how can we make them faster? In the middle of my search, a friend of mine introduced me to Taylor and Brandon, who now own Detroit Dynamics and we're part of the Detroit Dynamics to manufacture our propellers. And when I met them, I instantly love these guys. They're great people. We met in their office. They told me how passionate they were about making our props. I said, hey guys, I'll give you a shot. And they said, do you want to see it? I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, we're almost done machining one blade. I said, how could you do that? We just met. And they said, well, we programmed it this morning. And would you like to see it in our shop? So you go into the shop, they open the doors, and I see one blade of a Cheryl propeller almost completed out of aluminum. I turn to the guys and I say, when did you program this? They said, we started this morning. And I was just blown away at the talent that exists here in Detroit. And it confirmed for me that this was the right decision to do manufacturing in Detroit, keeping the United States. And I turned to the guys and said, you guys are now my team and we're gonna make hundreds of thousands of these things. We developed a really unique process room that allows us to make any propeller geometry that we need. That doesn't mean it's easy. It's extremely difficult to make this geometry. And I traveled the world trying to find the right team of people to make it. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. I came up with this idea and started the company in Philadelphia. I traveled as far as India and Asia to try to figure out how to make this and found out that the best people in the world, they were in my backyard. Um, they were here in Detroit, Michigan all along, fourth generation tool makers, people who could make anything that you bring to them. You guys came from your, your parents' shop. You guys yep. learned like in your parents' shop. Yep. And what's the, what's the company's name so we give them a shout out? Precision Mold and Machining Services. Boom. And we do all our custom large part machining over at Precision and we do all production work over here. Super good, super good. You know, there's a lot of people in manufacturing and it's just level after level and that expertise is everything. What is your history like? What are you, you ran Heller's forever or what? Well, we knew about Heller for a while. We never really looked into them. Last March, we went over to their headquarters. We saw their machine and we were like, oh wow, that is a really high quality machine. And you guys were running like DMG Mori and stuff. Yep, yeah, we, we were DMG Mori fanboys, but for this job, what we're doing, 
this is a perfect machine for this job, really. I mean, I have DMG Mori right there on my arm. Oh, man. <laughs> so we got the keys to the building on December 1st. Machines were delivered on December 12th. And you said, like, other machines in this class, they were, like, half price or something. Close, close to it. And they got you the machines on time. Got the machines. Actually, they came early. And you guys work together, so yeah. how cool is that? Yeah, yeah. awesome. And you love machining? Oh, yeah. I love it. Love, Love it. it. With a passion. Oh, yeah. Super cool, man. I'm here all day, every day, Monday through Sunday. You, you see our videos and stuff? Oh, yeah. I actually watched the very first episode of your uh, TV show when it oh, came out. Oh, way back. Yeah. Way back. That's awesome, man. Uh, Ten years ago, I was working as a video producer in the film industry, and I was trying to think of a way to film classical music with a drone. Drones are really noisy, so I thought, well, if I want to film classical music, I have to make a noiseless drone. It made me start to think about the tip of the propeller, which is where most of the noise comes from. So I thought, well, classical music, it can't just be a little quiet, it has to be silent. So I have to not just minimize the tip, I have to get rid of it completely. Uh, so I asked myself the question, what would a tipless propeller look like and how would it function? And this idea popped in my head, and I immediately ran home and made one out of duct tape and put it at the end of a drill and I put an empty uh, gallon of milk on the countertop. I turned the drill on and it blew the empty gallon of milk uh, off the countertop. I made another one, a standard propeller, this is very scientific, out of duct tape and it just wiggled the, uh, the container. So I thought, I've got something here. So first of all, these machines are cool because they have a party mode. So we're here party mode and then work mode. That's a little quirk of the machines. These machines are incredibly fast, uh, 3,500 inch per minute rapid travel. Um, but anyway, on the prop here, uh, we're doing our semi-pass here. Um, so we're, we're ripping off all that stock and then we're, we're coming in, we're semi-finishing it. And then after that, we come in with our, our small finisher and that's where we're getting the high quality surface from. And that, there's a lot of hours in doing that so we can get the perfect finish before we go into the polishing process. When you're, when you're trying to machine a part successfully, you can, you can do things by the book or you can venture off the map and do things the way you want to try and, and, and just find out new things. So all of our cutting tools that we have here, we're running them 300% faster than what's actually recommended in the book. As you run it faster, your tool life goes down and then it's, it becomes a, a financial math problem. What's going to pay off faster? Is it do you want a faster machine time or do you want uh, to spend more money on, on tooling? For us, we're going to rip through that tooling, but it's the perfect amount to where it makes sense. So one of the big reasons we went with Heller is we know they're big into the production line and they're proven in that field. And that's what we're really looking for, is something that's going to be reliable and have the longevity for a, a production project. So what's the, what's the talent between you two guys? So I do more of like the programming and figuring out the processes, getting everything down, the right surface finish, and everything needed to make a good product. I spend a lot of my time dealing with customers. I'm on the phone. Uh, bringing new, new work into the shop and all that kind of stuff. And one of our philosophies that really helps us get to where we're at is we're not afraid to take on a challenge of a difficult to machine part. So we love that challenge and we see something cool, we'll take a chance on it even if it means we're going to lose money on the first part. That is how you make money. You find the, the problems that people are having and you solve those problems. As a, as a program, I wanted to run harder parts, more difficult parts. I was bored with the same stuff, right, you know? Right. But then all of a sudden you get in with SpaceX, you get in with these big companies and they you solve their problems and that's when you get longevity and consistency and like yeah. you just have work. Then you solve their problems, they're not going anywhere and you can get good money for the stuff. So I love that whole philosophy. I heard them talking earlier and they were saying that most boats actually kind of pivot and you gotta kind of like keep working it where with your uh, props, it just goes straight. Uh, you can take your hands off the wheel and it's just straight. Uh, we did a test recently with BoatTest.com where the captain actually took his hands off the wheel for over a minute and we just stayed on course. And that's really, that's really unheard of for boating. You've got to always be constantly adjusting with quarter turns and half turns. Uh, that kind of goes away with our propeller. You're able to control the boat and go in a solid direction a lot easier. It's smoother, right? There's less vibration. It could be uh, 20 or more decimals quieter at a, at a given speed.
which is huge for a boat because I invented it, trying to think of a way to make a noiseless drone or quiet drone, and that translates into a very, very quiet operating environment on a boat too. For your boat, there's a whole new operating range. Uh, we give them a lot more speed in that mid RPM range, and we give better reverse thrust. There's a whole host of benefits for boaters to go beyond the efficiency. This is incredible. And what I saw you guys had like the Kaiser compressors. I got like the same system. You oh, know really? what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's, it's awesome. Woo! Manufacturer right here That's in right. Detroit. Boom! If you're looking for a career path that you may be a little confused, you don't want to go to college, you should definitely check out Titans of CNC Academy. You're going to learn everything you need to know. Once you you realize everything you taught in your daily life pretty much started out on a CNC machine, and, and you can make a great living just working on these machines, and it's it's super cool. It's super cool, and we back then we didn't have Titans of CNC Academy, but now Titans out here, he's building this for you guys. It's all free, and uh, you should definitely check it out. What what other advice do you guys have for people out there trying to make it happen? I'd say take full advantage of your software. Know your software, learn, and be able to take that to the top level, because that's where you're going to get the time out of your parts. And then also, when it comes to tooling, make sure you spend the money needed to get the best tooling for the job. I just love your passion. I love what you guys are doing, and I believe in it so much. You know, people, sometimes I push tools, but I'm all about, like, tool life. But there are some jobs that are so complex, and I'm okay with wasting through a couple tools to get it done twice as fast or three times as fast because the process of machining is way more expensive. The part is way more expensive than the tool. So you just gotta weigh those, right? So good. Boom. Thank you guys for having me, man. Absolutely. Woo! So, you guys are almost like twins too, except they're big. Almost, yeah. Boom. If you guys didn't know these guys, now you know Taylor and Brandon making it happen. Yeah. Uh, and because Thank of you man. guys, because of you guys, these parts are made in Detroit, USA. That's right. We get the boom? Boom. Boom, boom. baby. <laughs> Let's do it.